Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. So if you can learn three things to get a job in cloud and DevOps, what should you learn? So in today's video, we will go over top 10 trending topics as per a report from a cloud guru. So we'll go over this report and also uh, for the top skill that you should learn, uh, we will go over particular topics within that skill that you should master to help your cloud career. All right, let's get started. So this is the report from a cloud guru. I'll give the link for the report uh, in the description. So as you can see, this is pretty hot off the press. It came out uh, this month, May 2021. Uh, so all right, so let's go through the report. Uh, so number 10 is Google Cloud Platform or GCP. So one trend we see is um, multi-cloud is becoming a thing and GCP and Azure is catching up to AWS, which is actually fantastic uh, for your career. So no longer you have to think about what cloud to learn. Uh, what if I like GCP, should I learn GCP? Now you can start with any cloud your company is adopting or any cloud that you like uh, and still get a job. So number nine is a uh, DevOps. So DevOps is a broad area. Uh, so we'll have some of the specific things uh, in the list as well. Uh, but by DevOps, it means that the DevOps concepts, uh, different I diff general idea about different DevOps tools, etc. So number eight is a specific DevOps topics. Ansible, uh, which is used to automate a lot of stuff. Moving forward, uh, number seven is Linux. So that is pretty straightforward. But remember that this is a list of 10 things, right? So if you are new, you should concentrate only on the top three things, okay? Um, so number six is Docker. So Docker is still very valuable skill to have, but it's not super hot. Like knowing just that Docker is not good enough anymore, right? So you have to know one of the container orchestration system uh, to get valuable in the job market. So more on this uh, later. Okay, moving on. Number five is Azure. So Azure, Azure has been doing pretty good. Uh, if you guys and girls follow like stocks, uh, if you look at the Microsoft stock and their earning report, you'd see that Azure revenue is going up. Uh, which is again a good sign so you can now learn azure without having like analysis paralysis ah oh, should i learn azure or should i learn some other cloud now you can learn azure and get good jobs number four is terraform so i hinted this in my other videos as well uh, to get into devops you need to know at least one infrastructure as code uh, so for AWS, if you're working in AWS, I highly recommend learning CloudFormation. Uh, but if you want to uh, keep it open to any cloud, uh, then Terraform is the popular one. And that's what is showing in this report as well. All right, time for top three. Uh, the bronze medal or number three goes to Python. Python is very, very powerful. So it is easier to learn you can write short Python scripts to do different things. So if you want to get a job in governance or security, Python comes in play. If you want a job as a solutions architect, uh, Python comes in play because you can create small Python programs for proof of concepts and whatnot. For DevOps, Python comes into play. Uh, and also, uh, if you are specialized areas like data scientist or something, Python is super powerful in analytics and data science areas. If you are someone who works in legacy technology, like for me, I used to work in mainframe, uh, Python is much easier to learn than learning Java or Node.js, right? So I highly recommend learning Python. All right, number two, the silver medal goes to AWS. So AWS, is still king of the hill when it comes to public cloud. Different industries across different verticals, uh, starting from highly secure organizations such as uh, financial institutions, government, uh, as well as high sensitivity organization, they run AWS workload. Another advantage of AWS is 
since AWS is around for the longest and uh, different kinds of companies starting from startup to uh, mid-size to enterprise to government uh, companies run on AWS you have a lot of samples out there, reference architectures, code uh, that you can just adopt and uh, get going, right? So, uh, but again, at the end of the day, uh, let's say you work in a company and your company company's projects are going into GCP. So you have the opportunity to get hands-on experience uh, and to learn GCP with your peers in the workplace, then learn GCP. But if you are someone who works in a company and the company hasn't chosen any of the public clouds, uh, so choose AWS and learn that. All right, the gold medal goes to Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is exploding right now. So if I go to LinkedIn and I go to jobs and I search with Kubernetes, uh, let's say in United States, you'll see there are 49,000 jobs, which is insane with Kubernetes. Also within Kubernetes, there are different uh, job role. Like now there are jobs just for DevOps for Kubernetes. Similarly, for more specialized areas, if you know how to implement machine learning models on container or HPC or high performance compute on container, you can have a job, right? So same thing for Kubernetes operations. If you are someone who know how to uh, do observability, monitoring and debugging Kubernetes uh, operational issues, you can have a job. It is a super hot place right now and it is just starting. Don't think that, oh Raj, it is already 2021, all these things are out, I am behind. That is not true. Like if you look around your, your company, not even 20% of the whole workload has gone to cloud and only a percentage of that is in Kubernetes. So there is a lot of room to grow. So one challenge with Kubernetes is uh, it has a lot of components. So let's take a look at different components of Kubernetes and which one should you absolutely learn to get a job. So this is the infamous Kubernetes Glacier um, so apparently there are some things that everyone sees, but then there are a lot of things that goes deep. However, the good news is you don't need to learn all this, right? So to get a job and even to get into a project and start working, you need to know this thing. So let's go over it. So you absolutely need to know this top tier. The Docker, Deployment, kubectl, Run, Nginx, uh, pods and replica set. For the second one, you need to know HPA, you need to know ingress, you need to know config map, you need to know service. Now I don't know why it says GKE but it doesn't matter. You can learn GKE, you can learn EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service from AWS or you can learn Azure Kubernetes Service. That's up to you. Well, once you learn one thing, you should be able to pick up the other as well. Now going a little deeper, you should have basic concept of Helm. You should know what is Helm, but it is not absolutely necessary to do like a hands-on demo and all that stuff on Helm because Helm is not used in every project. There are alternatives to Helm. Now cluster autoscaler, you must know because whichever cluster you are running, you need to know cluster autoscaler. Uh, so that your clusters can scale. Moving one level deeper, so you should learn virtual pod autoscaler and daemon set. So I don't know why daemon set is deep. So daemon set is absolute necessary. That's how a lot of Kubernetes components run. Uh, so it should be on the top two tiers, but we will forgive them. This next tier, these are all optional. So if you want to learn it, you can learn it, but you should not need this for interviews. Only learn this after you learn the other ones I have circled. Now moving on, so even though this is uh, shown as a deep layer, but this RBAC, you should absolutely learn because it is the bread and butter of Kubernetes security. If you don't understand RBAC, there is no way you can understand like pod security policy, 
uh, network policy, etc. Uh, so in my mind, RBAC should be moved up top in a earlier layer, uh, but learn RBAC. And then moving forward, all the all this stuff, this node hardening and uh, image scanning, mutating webhooks. So the last two layers is totally optional. You should not need it for interviews or even for real world working projects. So what I tell my students is learn something that is going to give you the most uh, value for your time, right? Uh, so if you learn all the ones that I circled, they are used in almost all projects. But the things like node hardening, image scanning, etc. It's the functionality of a special group like a Kubernetes security admins group, a sysops administrator's job. So it's not that much value for your time. Like you can learn it after you are done learning the other stuff, but not in every interview, these questions will be asked, like the bottom two layers. If you're interested in learning container and Kubernetes along with the EKS and demos and DevOps components, uh, check out my Kubernetes and EKS course in Udemy. It is highest rated across all other Kubernetes courses. Uh, it has some uh, good ratings and good feedback uh, from the students. This is also part of Udemy for Business collection. So if your company is participating in it, uh, you can get this course for free. I will give a discounted link uh, for this course in the description. All right, guys and girls, uh, that's the video. If you found this video helpful, uh, if, you, if you learned something new that would help your cloud career, please click that like button, smash it if that's something you are into, and subscribe. Uh, this is still a small channel I'm trying to grow, uh, so your every like matters. So it really helps YouTube algorithm to suggest this video to the like-minded viewers. Also, let me know in the comment sections if you have any questions or what other kind of videos you are interested in. Uh, check out my container and Kubernetes uh, playlist, uh, which can teach you some of the critical Kubernetes components that I covered in that Kubernetes glacier. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.